they're, they're not like salmon. Once they come under fresh water, they're not really feeding. They're going by instinct. Cutthroat, there's only one reason that they're wandering around looking. Is that because they're looking for grub from the time they go down to all the time they come back. The only time they hardly feed is right at spawning. And I mean within days of it. So you just have to sort of... They're a neat fish because you can search them out. And you can go out to Fraser and find a place where you can get to the river and start walking and you'll find, you might fish a mile of river, but you'll find some place in there, all of a sudden you'll run into them. And it's really neat when you do, because they are a really nice fish. Um, the other thing about cutthroat is that uh, they can be very selective at certain times of day. We've always found generally cutthroat are not an early morning fish. They like it this time of year especially. We don't need easy bother going out for them until 10 or 11 o'clock and fish till about 4. And you get some of these days, well, this year is weird, but most years you can go out at this time of year, especially with the time changing, go out at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and you can go and look for these fish because you'll see them start to move. They'll get those warmer evenings and they're up and they're moving and you'll see them starting to porpoise. And here you'll have a big backwater that's 300 yards long, but all the fish are over in this little corner. Well, don't fish over there. Go where the fish are. And that's really, really prevalent to see run cutthroat. That's just the way they are. You have to search them out. They're very rarely you come to a big, huge stretch of water and they're all over it. They're just not. They're here or they're over there or whatever. But it's a really neat fish to look for. And it'd be really nice to see more anglers doing it because it is a really, it's a really easily available here. We have a long season. These fish start coming back the first time after they come back from the estuary. They come start coming back actually as early as August. It's not great fishing then because of course the salmon are in the water still fairly high in the Fraser. But once you get to both end of October, November, December, January, February, March on a normal year, you will you will, you'll, the fishing is there, and it is a very very good fishery. So I really hope a lot of you people try it. Another thing about these fish is that when you're fishing, when they go down to the estuary, a lot of the fish in the Harrison, about 25,000 fish in the Fraser and the Harrison, a lot of those fish in the Harrison, because it is the richest estuary we have around. It's just like a system of its own, and it is nutrient rich. So there's lots and lots of bug life, sticklebacks, coarse fish fry, everything in there. A lot of those cutthroat go in there, and they think in their mind, they get out there when they're released, like Dean says, as yearlings, they're 68 inches, and they get out in the Harrison, and it's a, fit, it's a food fest. So they think, well, why go to the ocean? This is the ocean. So they'll stay there. A lot of them will not leave there. They'll stay, and they'll grow just as fast as if they went to the ocean, because the food is there. But some of them will still go down. They have the anatomist genes, seagoing genes. They will migrate down to the estuary because every fry that comes out of the Fraser River ends up down there. And it's, it's and they'll feed there for three or four months. They go down there around May, early June, and they'll be back. By August, they're starting to come back already. And the second time they come back, they're three-year-olds, and those fish are your spawning fish. There's the odd one doesn't come back till they're four, but the bulk of them, and they are not like salmon, they will repeat spawn. In fact, cutthroat can probably spawn two or three times without dying. Eventually it wears on them, you know, a lot. They just eventually will, they will pass away. But generally they will spawn at least twice, once or twice, and sometimes even three times. So, you got any questions? There's a few in the better, the better they don't, there's an odd one comes up, the better. They do hang around in the better canal and the Sumas canal, especially getting this time of year. They know now, pretty quick, come April, early May, there's a lot of little fry gonna start coming out of this river and they actually will move into that area. And Dean can tell you about, when we stock the fish up here, that hatchery cut those, they're single clip. They're at a post in, it's cut off, all the fish stocked below mission are double clipped. They got the adipose fin missing plus a right or a left vent fin, which is not critical to them. That's why they tip. But if you catch any fish away up here, those fish are stocked in the same river, and we've caught them halfway to Hope the next year. So they, they're looking for food. They will migrate way up there, even though they were stocked in the lower river. 
And so those fish, when they start migrating up, they'll fish will come up from the stave, they'll come up and they know the mouth of the better, the mouth of the Harrison, they know there's food coming out of here. This is the smorgasbord pretty quick now. And that's what attracts those fish. Size range and cutthroat, the first time they when they're released, and the wild fish are kind of dissimilar. When they're released, they're about six to eight inches. The first time they come back, like if they release this May, they'll start coming back in August, September, October, right through till Christmas. They're around 11 to 13 inches. Then they'll go back again, and the next year, your three-year-old fish and four-year-old fish are usually from about 14, 15 inches up to 20 inches, you know, 50 centimeters, okay? And that's why when you, even you take brood fish, we're taking them, very rarely do you catch a spawning cutthroat at least the females, that is under 15 inches. 15 inches or bigger, you'd be just about guaranteed those fish are going to spawn the next spring. Yes, sir. The best bait around here, I mean, for you, if you just use a bait, worms has been a standby for 100 years. Single salmon eggs, if you use a bait, little pieces of roe, little pieces of shrimp, and if you're fishing with lures, 60, one sixteenth ounce to one half ounce crocodiles, little crocs, or Hildebrandt spoons, anything that looks like a minnow, a fish very attractive, is very good. Uh, if you're fly fishing, wired brown stones or black stones, little ones in size 10s or 12s, and then minnow fry, any minnow imitations, especially coming up soon. And that's in silver, goldish, greenish, because you want to represent not only fry, you want to represent sticklebacks, especially in the Harrison, where they are a big food, and in Pope River, they eat a lot of sticklebacks. Go ahead, Dean. Whereabouts are you going to fish in the Oak River? Well, anywhere right from the bottom all the way up to like uh, Pelly Road, up in that area. Uh, in behind the, uh, the, um, oh, yeah. Kinsman. Kinsman, Kinsman Hall, uh, in that area of down uh, Corbel, and through the park in there. Yeah. Any of the spots are nice in there. Anywhere where you got a little bit of flow, any uh, bridges where there's, uh, where the narrow, narrowing of the slough, and you get some extra flow there with some gravel. Mostly float fishing, but if you get into the bigger, open, more slower part of the slough, you can you get fly fishing in there as well. You say the biggest thing about this is, in a lot of the sloughs and that, because we are in an urban area, it's just finding access. I'm sure there are places where you see nice place to fish, but there's somebody's house there and something. Well, you just go ask them, and certain, some of them will let you go down there and fish. But yeah, any of the bridges from, like Dean says, from right down from Corbal all the way up to about as far as they seem to go right now is is Dungo Creek which is right at Annis Road where it enters but all the way down those sloughs there anywhere you can access there's trout and I'm surprised we don't see more people fishing there. You not only do you get cutthroat in there you get white fish you get the odd little rainbow which could be residualized steelhead smokes or whatever of course you get a few coarse fish too. The Harrison is better if it's accessed by boat because it gives you a a lot bigger area you can, same with the Fraser, but there is a lot of place on the Fraser you can sort of drive close enough to walk and then walk and fish. Eh? Um, there are other sloughs, or, uh, other places like that to fish, but we fish them all the way up as like halfway to Hope and then anywhere you can get out to the river. Johnson, Johnson Slough, any of those places. Place. Yeah, and they get them in, and these fish, but you got to look for them like, just because they're not there one day, right? That doesn't mean if you go back a week from now, they could be there. And the other thing is, it works the other way too. You went to this place yesterday or a week ago and you caught 20 fish. Oh, I'll take my buddy there, we can't wait. You get there, huh? You lied to me. Well, he didn't lie to you, they're just gone. Hmm. And I think the fish, when they travel in bunches, they have the ability to, if you go into a small backwater or a riffle, they have the ability to eat out the food in there pretty quick. So then they're moving again. But the food rebuilds and two weeks later those fish might be back there. But that's just the way cutthroat are. They are constantly looking for food. That is what makes them cutthroat. Yeah. 
What's that? Yeah, well, I mean, even in the winter, the Fraser's cold. I mean, this, is, this year has been around 34 to 35 degrees, and yet those fish are still there. But that's why afternoons are probably better, because they're just sitting at one degree or two degrees, and the river goes up to three. For them, that's a massive increase in temperature. I mean, the water's almost doubled in temperature, and their metabolism is totally based on water temperature what they do and then they can get very active and that's why afternoons generally are best especially at this time of year the other thing is you go into harrison at this time of year the harrison right now is 44 degrees i mean it's 10 degrees warmer than the fraser because it's coming out of harrison lake the fraser is strictly melted snow immediately everything that sits in the harrison lake it takes it sits there for a while so it does get a chance to warm up a bit and and the difference is that i've noticed in some of these backwaters where we've been fishing lately the top ends of the backwater, there's nothing running in except groundwater. So you'll go down where it comes out of the freezer, and it's 35, 36, 37 degrees. You go to the top of the backwater, and it's 41 to 46 degrees. Well, you know where those fish are going to be. They're not going to be down here where it's so cold they're just about going to sleep. They're going to be up here where they're more active. Because the optimum temperature for trout, whether they're rainbows or cutthroat, right? It's going to be 40 to 50 degrees. I mean, that for around here, that's that's huge. Okay, that's an activity period. And actually, when you're dealing with rainbows, it's even higher. It's like 50 to 60 degrees. That's optimum. 